Now I am talking about azeotrope. Okay. Suppose you have formation of azeotrope, will the residue curve map change? Now, in McAptill method, okay, in McAptill method, y versus x really is this, right? No azeotrope for ideal system or non azeotropic system for that matter. So, this is the region in which I can move, right? Depending on the reflux ratio, and I can go from XB to XD, right? That means from pure component B to pure component A, right? So, that movement is possible, there is no restriction, okay? There is no boundary. Whereas, when I have formation of as you drop, minimum boiling as you drop can be maximum also. What happens? I cannot move from XB to XD, or rather, I can go from pure component B to pure component A, right? My movement is restricted. So, I have this as my feasible region, okay, if I want to move in this part of the composition space or this. Right, I can't go from this to this, so there's a boundary. Okay, now in ternary system, there's no azeotrope. There's no azeotrope. I can go from this point to this point. Okay, so I have residue curves. Okay, going from the most volatile component to the least volatile component, no boundary, okay, right? There is no boundary. Suppose you have formation of azeotrope, okay. Now let us consider only one azeotrope, one binary azeotrope, okay. This is your A, this is your B, this is your C, right. A is the most volatile, B is the intermediate boiling, C is the least volatile. Okay. Now, I say I have one azeotrope here, okay. a binary azeotrope between B and C. Okay. Now, suppose A boils at 30 degree centigrade, B boils at 50 degree centigrade, C boils at 70 degree centigrade. Okay. And these are the boiling points of these components. Okay. Now, I say I have azeotrope between B and C which is a minimum boiling azeotrope. Okay which boils at say 40 degree centigrade because the boiling point should be less than these two, right? A minimum boiling as your top and its composition is here, say 50, 50 percent, okay? But this boiling point is greater than this, right? Now, I want to plot a residue curve map for this particular system. And this map is going to be different from the ideal system because we will see that it may not be possible to, to go everywhere in the triangle, okay, in the composition space if I start from any point. See here there is no restriction, you can move anywhere. Now let us see what happens, okay. how will the residue curve map behave in this case. Okay. For example, suppose I start with this composition, okay. say mixture of B and C and just boil it residue curve, okay. I want to plot residue curve. In which direction will I move? Suppose I start from this point, I will go up or down, down, up because see the temperature. See, residue of temperature is going to increase with respect to time, right? Here you have a temperature 40. Don't look at this temperature, okay? This this point, the temperature is 40. So, with respect to time, okay, the temperature is going to increase. So, I'll move up, right? I'll move towards B, okay? Right? Slightly unusual, right? You're starting with mixture of B and C, okay? B and C, C is the 
less volatile component high boiling okay and b is more volatile component but then when i start boiling i'm starting with this composition what happens at the end i will be left with b and not c even if c is the least volatile component right why right that's right that's right hmm? okay so it means that c because even if c as such is less volatile as such in pure form it is less volatile as per its boiling point in the presence of b it becomes volatile its escape tendency increases because of azeotrope okay and it goes out if you do material balance since you starting with large amount of b compared to c all c go, goes away and in the residue you have pure b right okay what what if i start with this particular point in which direction will i go towards b or c c why again follow the temperature right because now even if i start with bc mixture c goes away but initially itself i have large amount of c present so i'll be left with c material balance okay right this is your behavior start with binary system okay what about this mixture where will i go c right what about this b okay now i just start started with binaries now let's look at what happens if i am starting with a ternary mixture okay i'm starting with a ternary mixture suppose you are here right you will have a residue curve which will go to the stable point c right if you extend it in backward direction it will go to the unstable point a right okay now suppose you are here where will you go will you go to c see you are very close to this binary edge this binary edge tells me this binary edge tells me that i should move towards b look at these two arrows they both are pointing towards b so b is going to be a stable point now b is going to be a stable point compare it with this here these arrows one arrow was going towards b and one arrow was moving away from b right so b was not stable b was saddle here both the arrows are going towards b b is going to be stable now what happens to this particular point like if i start with this as starting mixture okay start boiling it residue composition okay which direction will it go it will move in b direction so you have a residue curve like this and it will go and stop there because i started with very small amount of c present see here right i have large amount of b present so i am going towards b here so what does that mean it means that if i start with this composition the stable point is c if i start with this composition okay stable point is b right okay that means unlike this particular case where irrespective of where i start okay i get c at the end whereas in this case if you start in this region okay you get c if you start in this region you get b right that means there is a boundary there are two different regions okay if i join this line right any point above this line okay right any point above this line if i start with that composition i get b as a stable point any point below this line if i start with that composition i get c as a stable point so at two different distillation regions okay and because of that you have this particular behavior 
okay, where I can't cross the boundary, right. Now, I have just drawn a straight line, it need not be a straight line, it all depends on how the residue curves move here, but most of the times, most of the times the boundary is linear, okay. This is no basic condition why it should be linear, but it is observed that most of the systems the boundary is linear, but some systems it may be a curve, right. So, if you are in this region stable point is B, you are in this region stable point is C. That means I have got two different regions and because of this is because of the azeotrope, right. What is the difference between this system and this system? Just the formation of azeotrope between B and C that has that is responsible for creating boundary in the distillation region or other composition space, okay. And uh, I have two different regions. I hope it is clear, okay. So, let us go ahead. What is its significance? How does it affect or influence my methodology as far as conceptual design is concerned? So, I have a residue curve map and in this case I have a boundary, right. This boundary is similar to this, okay. Here since it was binary system I was plotting y versus x, right. But then the meaning is saying I am not able to cross. In this case also I am not able to cross this boundary. A residue curve map starting from a point in this region or residue curve starting from point in this region cannot cross this boundary and go here, right, okay. If the residue curve, this is very important, if the residue curve cannot cross, okay, then the column profile cannot cross. Why? Because residue curve is the behavior obtained under extreme conditions, the best possible conditions at infinite reflux ratio, large number of stages. If the residue curve cannot cross, then even column cannot take you from this region to this region, right. See that that is the reason I spent some time correlating residue curve with column profiles. Right. Residue curve is something that is obtained under best possible conditions inside a column, right, as far as this diagram is concerned, xa versus xb, right. And suppose you have boundary where residue curve is not able to go from one region to another region, a column also cannot take you from one region to another region, right. That means, that means I cannot have my xd here in this region and I cannot have my xb here or other way around. I cannot have my xd here and I cannot have my xb here at a time. So, this is not possible, this is not possible. Is that clear? The end compositions of a distillation column, okay, should not be sitting in two different regions of residue curve map, okay. This is a very important information, vital information, okay, that helps us do further analysis, okay. And it is quite similar to what we have learned here. Your two regions, I cannot have my xd here and xb here at a time, right. Similarly, I cannot have my xd here and xb here or the other way around, okay, at a time. So, if I have my xd here, my xb should be in this region somewhere, right. You have, if you have xd here, then you should have xb here somewhere depending on where your xf is, it should be on the straight line, okay. Suppose my xf is here, okay, and if I join this, okay, this is my straight line, this is my xd, this is my xf, all right. My xb will be, can I have my xb here? I cannot have my xb there because distillation is not able to cross the boundary even if the material balance is valid, okay. So, my xb can be only in this particular region before the line crosses the boundary, right. So, this can be my xb, right, that is the meaning of it. 
if it is a maximum boiling azeotrope, how will the residue curve map behave or how, how will it look? Can you do it? Okay, because we have done it for minimum boiling. Okay, the same procedure we can follow it. Okay, just draw the arrows on the binary edges first. Okay, this is your maximum boiling azeotrope. Okay, 30 degree centigrade, 50, 70, and maximum say you have 90 degree centigrade. Okay, which should be higher than these two. Right. So if you start with this point, instead of going in this direction, I'll go in this direction towards the higher temperature. Right. Similarly, if I start with this point, instead of going to this point, now I will move to this point. Right. Okay. Now, this point becomes, as far as this binary edge is concerned, this point becomes a stable point. Right. Okay. So, let us see for this binary edge, I will move in this direction. Right. 30 and 70. Okay towards the higher temperature. Then in on this binary edge 30 and 50, I will move in this direction. Okay. Now look at these points. In the earlier case, these two points were stable points because both the arrows were going towards this point. Right. But now in this case, look at what is happening. Okay. At first this point is concerned, the one arrow is going towards it, one is going away from it. What does it mean? It is saddle. One arrow is going towards it and one is going away, right? that is saddle. If both the arrows are going towards it, it is a stable point. right? So, this is a saddle. Now, see the stability is changed. Earlier it was stable point, now it is a saddle. Similarly, here, okay? one arrow is going towards it, one is going away from it right so this again is saddle right okay inside see then i have to just follow this i just go close to this it's going to follow c there'll be one residue curve like this and so on right Similarly, you will have one residue curve going this way. Okay. So, best way to plot residue curve map using just boiling point information is first do it for binaries okay, and slowly go inside a triangle and just follow the binaries. Okay. How many stable points you have here? in this diagram, two stable points, there is only one stable point no? because all, all the residue curves are meeting this point. right? So, this maximum boiling azeotrope is the stable point. In the earlier case, I had two stable points. right? In this case, I have just, just one stable point. How many unstable points you have here? Only one unstable. I am not asking saddle and unstable. Only one unstable point. In the earlier case, you had how many unstable points? Yeah, right. One sad, yeah. In the earlier case, you had one unstable and two stable points. In this case, you have one unstable and one stable, right? Okay. Shall I take the earlier case? I will just draw the earlier case again here. In earlier case, this is case 1, this is case 2. In earlier case, I had this as unstable point. In this case, also I had this as unstable point. In earlier case, since you had two regions, at this as a stable point, this as a stable point, there are two stable points. So, one unstable node, two stable nodes. In this case, I have one unstable node, how many stable? One stable node, right. See the difference, saddles, 
in this case how many saddles you had? One, where is that? As your draw, right? So this is the saddle, look at this, you have one arrow going towards it and two going away from it, right? So, so this is saddle, right? This is a saddle. So one saddle, okay? What is happening here? How many saddles? Hmm? Two saddles. Total should be four. Why? Total should be four. Always in this case. Why? Three pure components. How many nodes? See, ternary system minimum three, three nodes, pure components. Okay, and depending on how many azeotropes you have, will be additional nodes. Right? In this case, in both the cases rather, you have only one azeotrope. So the total is four. But stability is changing depending on whether the azeotrope is maximum boiling or minimum boiling. Right? Whether the azeotrope is maximum boiling or minimum boiling. In the cap field, you have ideal system, okay. How many stable, how many unstable? Hmm? How many unstable? Huh? One stable, one unstable. That's right. See two pure components, two components, pure components, so two nodes, okay. Ideal system or non-azeotropic system, you have one unstable one stable right okay azeotropic system how many nodes total 3 right 3 how many stable how many unstable is a minimum boiling azeotrope. Is a minimum boiling azeotrope. How many unstable? Two unstable. Yeah, one unstable, which is a minimum boiling. Okay, the minimum boiling unstable, and two stable. Okay, right. What does it mean? Stable node in a column, where will you realize a stable node in the bottom or top? Huh? Yeah, in this case, unstable node is this, and stable are these two. Okay, these are stable nodes. Oh, sorry, down is one unstable and one stable. Sorry, one. Stable, one unstable, okay? Because there are two nodes, one stable, one unsta unstable. Here the three nodes, okay? One unstable and two stable. You have unstable node and stable node, okay? Now in the column, will you realize stable node in the top, or will you realize that stable node composition in the top? Can you get C in the top? C is stable, no? In ideal system, C is stable. Can you realize the at, at the top? No, right? But distillate composition will be close to unstable node, right? Okay. The bottom composition will be close to stable node, right? So in this case, this is my unstable node. If I start distillation here with this feed, I will realize this at the top. The minimum boiling azeotrope will always come at the top. But if I start with this composition, what is the top composition? Hmm? Azeotrope only, okay, because it is an unstable node. So if you are in this region, the top composition is this and not this, okay, because your VLE curve is opposite, okay, the volatility is changing, right, okay. So unstable node would be 
always at the top and stable will be at the bottom. Now based on this information can you say how many regions are there? If I tell you that I have these many stable nodes, these many unstable nodes and these many saddles, okay, I give you this information. For a given system, I tell you about the nodes, how many nodes I have and their stability, okay. How many saddles, how many unstable nodes, how many stable nodes. If I give you this information, can you tell me how many regions are there? How many regions are there? I do not need to really plot the residue curve map. See the, all the examples that we have considered here, okay. Based on this, I can come up with some rule, right, saying how many regions are there if I know the number of nodes and their stability. Look at this case, one stable, sorry, one unstable, one stable. How many regions? How many regions? Just one. Just one. You have one unstable, two stable. That means there are two regions. What is so particular about this? If I look at number of pairs available of stable and unstable, okay, how many pairs? Two pairs, right? Two pairs. One unstable node is common, okay, in two pairs. So there are two pairs. Right, there are two pairs, so two zones, okay, two zones. In ideal ternary, how many unstable? One unstable, one stable, one saddle, right. How many pairs of stable and unstable? one pair, right, one pair. So, how many regions? Just one region. What about this? How many pairs? Let us look at this first. How many pairs? Two pairs because one unstable node is common, okay. So, two pairs. Okay, right. So, two zones, two zones. In this case, you have two zones. In this case, how many zones? If you go by pairs, then how many zones? Just one zone. One pair, so one zone. Of course, a very peculiar residue curve map where if you just look at this, I tend to think that this is a boundary. Okay, because there is no residue curve going from this region to this region, right? Okay, the very peculiar RCM or residue curve map where I tend to believe or tend to think that there is a boundary there, okay, but then this is not a real boundary, I can break this boundary, we will come to that later, okay. As per this analysis, there is only one pair, okay. That means that there is only one zone, okay. That means I can have a distillation column, okay, which can of which the profile can cross this boundary, okay. We will come to that later. But in this case, since I have two regions, okay, or two zones, right, I have a boundary present, right. I cannot cross this. Let us look at another case. Let us look at another case where I have A, B, C okay. and I have a minimum boiling azure trough between A and C. Okay. I have a minimum boiling azure trough between A and C, a minimum boiling azure trough. So, say 30, 50, 70 and minimum boiling. Okay. Uh, 25, okay, 25, all right. Can you draw RCM for this? 
just look at the binary edges first okay you will get the answer how many stable nodes how many unstable nodes okay so i have one answer which says one unstable one saddle and two stable and one answer saying two unstable one saddle and one stable is any other answer okay i'll look at the binary edges where should i draw the arrow towards a or as you draw huh a here c here towards b to c here a to a to b right okay so look at the points no pure points one arrow is going towards it one is going away from it saddle or stable or unstable unstable one is going towards it no and one is going away from it saddle right okay so this is saddle right one saddle i have identified what about this one arrow is going towards it one is going away from it okay second saddle what about this stable both the arrows are going towards it okay so one stable i have identified what about this point yeah so both the arrows are going away from it so so two saddles one stable node and one unstable node okay two saddles one unstable and one stable can i draw the rcm so i'll just follow this look at this i'm going in this direction then here then here and then right and to just do this this is my rcm this is my residue curve map okay for this system how many zones or how many regions is there a boundary simple no let first look at the pairs there only one pair no boundary there is no boundary i hope this is correct or this is clear rather hmm? you can formulate your own problem okay like you can say i have azeotrope here okay i can have minimum boiling azeotrope at the center okay ternary azeotrope okay you can you can do it on your own okay like for example okay i'll just go fast i have azeotropes like they have four azeotropes okay all are minimum boiling all are minimum boiling okay now let's not spend time in this i'll draw rcm for you okay minimum boiling this is the minimum of minimum okay right all right so this is 30 this is 50 this is 70 now this is 20 uh, 5 this is uh, 20 this is 40 and this is 10 okay right a residue curve map for this would be like this the point in the center is unstable so how many unstable point one okay these are all saddles now three saddles and three three stable points three stable points okay so how many regions now how many pairs one unstable three stable so three pairs so three zones one two and three right they are all minimum boiling what if this is maximum two or minimum again i'll see will change okay what if two or maximum one is minimum okay what if 
this is maximum and rest all are minimum. There are many possibilities and accordingly RCM will change. And we do not have any control over VLE, okay. basically the compounds they decide how to interact and all right depending on their structures. So, we have to just accept it and design our system accordingly. Okay. So, there are many such possibilities, okay. uh, in fact most of them have, we have seen, this is the one that we looked at in the last diagram. Okay. See, you have a boundary. You have one stable, you have one unstable, this is sorry, two stables and one unstable, right. The one that we looked at now, this is something that we have not seen, okay. You may have azeotrope between A and B, which is a minimum boiling azeotrope, okay. So, this becomes unstable point and you have this residue curve map. Now, in this case, in this case again probably the convention is different see A is the stable point, but it is quite similar to what we have seen just now is the formation of azeotrope between A and C which is a minimum boiling azeotrope. Okay. A is highest boiling, so it goes this way it's exactly opposite to what we have seen just now okay. because in that case C is the stable point in this case A becomes a stable point depending on its boiling point. Okay. So, I am just not following our regular convention here. Okay. So, there are many possibilities, I have just shown some representative RCMs okay, or the RCMs which we come across uh, most of the times right. and there are some features of every RCM. So, if you just look at RCM, you should be able to know what kind of system is this okay. and later on depending on RCM, I should be able to come up or work out a column sequence for azeotropic distillation, extractive distillation and all that, that is the purpose, okay. that is the purpose. Now, let us read these comments or notes rather, note okay, only case 1 that is this, this case out of these 3 has distillation boundary and 2 regions, you know the reason okay, because the 2 pairs okay, and I have I see the distillation boundary. Number of regions is equal to number of pairs of unstable and stable nodes. Okay. In case 2 and 3, 2 and 3, azeotrope can be broken by synthesizing a proper column sequence, and we are going to see that now. Okay. Now, for example, see what is the typical problem in industry? I have azeotrope. You looked at that particular experiment, okay, ethanol water azeotrope. Okay. I want to break that azeotrope and get both components in pure form. Can I use the RCM to design or synthesize the column sequence okay, to get pure A and pure B which are forming as your draw, right. We are going to see this. Okay. So, RCMs can be used to break the azure. For example, I have this azeotrop. Can I break this azeotrop and get pure A and C by using B as entrainer? Okay, because when I use B as entrainer, okay, I have a ternary system. So, any azeotropic or extractive distillation, most of the times there is very special cases where you have binary azeotropic distillation, but most of the times since you add the third component, okay, minimum you have three components in the system, okay, so it becomes multi component system. So, problem is like this, I have azeotrope between A and C, this is my azeotrope. Can I use B as entrainer to break this azeotrope and get pure A and pure C? Okay. Now, when I say can I use B means what? When I select B, the RCM gets fixed automatically okay, because it is a characteristic of the components. Okay. Right? It is it depends on the thermodynamics of the system. So, A and B are given to you, for example, say ethanol water. Okay. Can I add B? Now, B is such that the RCM of the ternary system is like this. So, can I add B to break this azeotrope? That is the answer I want and we are going to see whether I can add B and get a separation. Okay. Similarly, here I have this azeotrope A and B. Can I add C? Okay. So, that you have 
the RCM for the ternary system like this which breaks this isotrope and gives you A and B and read this particular note. The case 3 that means this particular RCM okay, is a very typical case okay, of traditional extractive distillation. Okay. The entrainer C is the least volatile. Okay. You remember extractive distillation, what do you do in extractive distillation? You have mixture, right? you add third component. Now third component may not form azeotrope, that is what I told you okay, when we defined very first lecture. The third component that I add in extractive distillation may not form azeotrope with either A or B. Same is happening here, I am adding the third component C, it is not forming azeotrope with B, it is not forming azeotrope with A. But the third component changes your vapor liquid equilibrium favorably in such a way that it helps the separation or breakage of this azeotrope. Okay. An example is again ethanol water and C is ethylene glycol. Okay. Extractive distillation to break the azeotrope of ethanol water okay, using ethylene glycol as entrainer. Okay. Most of the times this is the least volatile, you can see this is a stable point highest boiling C, right. So, what do you do? You add it at the top, you have mixture azeotrope going in the ball in the column, in the bottom you get one of these components in pure form and the next column you separate the other component, okay. You are going to see the sequence, right, okay. So, basically now these RCMs are used to design or synthesize a sequence for azeotropic distillation or extractive distillation. Okay, so, I am slowly coming to the feasibility aspect or designing sequence for or synthesizing the sequence for azeotropic and extractive distillation. Okay, right? Now, let us consider this particular case. Right? We go back to this problem. I have this mixture A and C formation of azeotrope. This is my feed. This is my feed and can I use B to separate or break this azeotrope and get pure A and B. Okay. So, let us solve this problem. This is my azeotrope, it is a minimum boiling azeotrope and I will go back to my old convention where C is the least volatile and we have it earlier RCN. Okay. Instead of going in this direction, I am just going in the direction of C because C is the least volatile component. The problem is you have this as a feed, this mixture is given to you and you you are supposed to get pure A and B. Now B is not in picture, see the B is not in picture initially, the mixture given to you is azeotrope, okay, azeotrope. Now I want to break that azeotrope and get A and B. Now suppose I just give this azeotrope to a distillation column AC azeotrope, what will happen? What will happen? Nothing will happen. Azeotrope, okay. you will get azeotrope at the top, you will get azeotrope at the bottom, right. So, I cannot can't help it, okay. I cannot really uh, do simple distillation to break the azeotrope, right. That is why I use third component. So, the question now is can I use B which gives me this RCM right, to break this azeotrope. Okay. So, that is the question. Now, that means I am going to add B in the system. I have this as a feed. Okay. I have this as a feed. There are no boundaries in RCM. I am going to use this RCM to synthesize the column sequence separate A and C from pure, from the feed which is azeotropic composition. Right. If I add B in the system, the overall composition would be, now I have A C azeotrop, point is here, I am going to add B in this, I am going to add B. What is the resultant composition? Where will B in the triangle the resultant composition huh? towards B yes fine but towards B means where here 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 can you 
be more specific yeah I'm, see I have this as a feed I go on adding B so I will go in this direction right I will go in this direction but where it will be on the straight line joining right again liver rule material balance right I have two different compositions if I mix these two compositions the resultant would be on this line somewhere okay so this resultant composition here would be on the line joining azeotropic composition and b right so you are somewhere here so let's say i add b such that the resultant is here if i add more b resultant will move in this direction right towards b but i add in such a proportion that the resultant field is here okay right and this field is going to go to a column right okay now in the column i need to identify the end compositions what will come from the top and what will come from the bottom okay you have choice now you have choice look at the stable nodes or unstable nodes because i want to identify top and bottom composition right now in this case which is a stable node this is your stable node this is your unstable node so i can't really design a column to get unstable node at the top why why should i do that because this is azeotrope in fact i want to break that azeotrope right so i'll design a column such that i get stable node at the bottom right stable node at the bottom so c right so i get pure c at the bottom is it possible it's possible why why is it possible because there is a residue curve which can take me from this point to c there is no boundary there is no boundary okay if residue curve can take me that means i can design a column okay the reflex ratio might be high it doesn't matter okay but at least feasibility is not an issue okay if reflex if we are uh, residue curve takes you from this composition to this composition that means okay i don't have problem i can design a column and get pure c there is no boundary in between okay, i don't have to really worry about okay so i can get pure c from the bottom now what is the top composition a ab okay ab where on that line joining ab right can you identify a top composition if i i have a perfect column with sharp split this is a continuous system okay this is a continuous system if you say that a remains in the column and doesn't have outlet then that is not correct right i'm feeding a to the system a should come out so if pure c is coming from the bottom from the top you have mixture of a b look at this diagram and we know okay top bottom com compositions and feed composition they are on the same line now for this column this is your feed composition i have already identified the bottom composition the top composition would be, would be where liver rule i just join this line and it will be here it can be here it can be here it can be here depending on how many stages i provide in the column how good is my separation okay but i say okay i provide sufficient number of stages i have large reflux ratio the column is good enough to do maximum possible separation a sharp split so i go very close to this particular edge right and this is my top composition right so this is ab and not just ab it is with this particular composition right all right 
So, with the help of B, I am able to separate C in pure form, right? That is what I wanted, right? Now I want pure A. What will I do? Next column. Because the ternary system, I need two columns minimum to separate all three components in pure form or at least two. Next column, okay. What do you have here? This is your feed, a binary system. What do you get at the bottom and what do you get at the top? A will be? Is that right? Look at the arrow. B is stable now on the binary edge. Stable point is in the bottom and you have A here, right? Okay. In order to complete the system now, this B and this B the same, these compositions are same. What will I do? I will provide a recycle, right? So, what did I do here? I have used the residue curve map, okay, to design or synthesize a column sequence to break the azeotrope AC with the help of B, right? Okay. So, this is what is very important for azeotropic systems. Now, how many stages your column will have? What will be the reflux ratio? You can go back to your old calculations. What did we do there? Calculate minimum reflux ratio. Okay. We did the same thing can be repeated here. Okay. Draw rectifying section profile, draw stripping section profile. Okay. See when the feed pinch of one of the sections okay, overlaps on the other, that is your minimum reflux ratio. Go by 1.5 or 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio and calculate actual number of stages. So, that calculation is not going to change. Okay. But formation of azeotrope has helped me in designing or synthesizing the column sequence which is very important. There is no other systematic method to do this. Right. For that you need to take help of residue curve map. Okay. Where did I use the information of residue curve map? What does residue curve map tell me? These arrows would tell me what, what is the bottom composition, what is the top composition. The arrows have helped me. This, these arrows were not there, this is not possible. Right? The fact that there is no boundary here also lets me, or the fact that there is no boundary here helps me to design this sequence. If there was a boundary here, then I should not have said that C is the bottom composition, right? Okay.